here we go. Put it on the computer. All right, I think we're good. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, it's me, it's Dr. B here with my good friend. And, uh, well, I guess uh, it's, at one point we were uh, adversaries for a long time, but either way, I'm glad to call, call my friend now, Jamin Olivencia. Uh, you've wrestled all over the place. You've been doing all kinds of other uh, endeavors and ventures. I know you've been really big into uh, doing a lot of life coaching right now, a lot of empowerment things. Uh, I've really enjoyed the stuff that you've put out and produced on YouTube and uh, just in general, I'm really, really a big fan of not just the content that you put out on uh, social media, on whatever page, but also just um, the insight and wisdom that you're able to provide even in our conversations as friends. So I'm, I'm very glad to be chatting with you today and uh, just to start things off, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Dude, I'm doing great, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> you got you made me sound like I was the fucking man or something. <laughs> I, 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 no, I man. I, I <laughs> No, man. I, I appreciate it, dude. Um, no, dude, I'm good, man. How about you? Are you doing good? Are you enjoying yeah, this time? I'm doing all right. It's, it's been strange. You know, I was furloughed last week as, uh, you know, I, for those that don't know, I'm a work as a physical therapist and, uh, you know, it's, it's weird times right now, but I'm just trying to take the most out of my free time to make opportunities to reconnect with uh, old friends like yourself even though we've been, you know, we've had, a fort we're fortunate that we go to the same gym together, so we were able to catch up, you know, a bit over the years. But recently, obviously, we can't go to the gym right now. Uh, so yeah. we're trying to take the opportunity to catch up with friends, work on different side projects, some different side businesses. And, you know, the, I, even though the situation right now is not ideal and I wouldn't wish it upon the world, I, I do think that there is silver linings and opportunities to be found. And it's just a matter of uh, either stepping up in, in rising up to the challenge or, or unfortunately, and, and I think a lot of people are doing this and I can't say I necessarily blame them or allowing it to defeat you, which, you know, and it's really a, at the end of the day, I, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like it's a personal choice that you, you have to make it, and it's a hard one to make. Yeah, man. Um, you're the one that's been talking to a lot of people that I'm sure have been going through a lot of these issues right now. So, so would, what would you say that's accurate or do you think it's, it's more than that? Uh, I think it's everything. Yeah. I don't think there is a wrong in this because, uh, everyone is entitled to their own perspectives at this time based upon the nuances and the things that have happened in their life that have taught them the way they are and, and the way to be. And so everyone's reactions are going to be a little bit different in this. Uh, I think that's so freaking important to remember, dude, like, Everyone is just going to react a different way. Like if you look at life, forget about being a human, forget about who you are. If you just look at life, it's, it's a jungle and in the jungle, crazy shit happens. And, uh, I don't know from my perspective, at least from me, I, I, I feel like this is a great opportunity for people to get to know themselves to kind of, um, you know, it's easy to, put a definition on who you are uh, because most of your time is spent working. So maybe, you know, you're a pro wrestler, you know, maybe you're an actor, a musician, a gas station clerk, whoever, like sometimes we, I think it's easy to identify with those things and say, this is who I am. And with this experience, at least is showing me is it's giving people the opportunity to if i'm looking at it from an optimistic point of view at least and that's how i try to look at everything i i see that this is an opportunity to really get to know yourself and to go more within and if you're irked by this whole entire thing maybe that's a great indicator of something you can work on uh it you know i don't know uh that's always what i say to anybody as a uh, life coach, <laughs> I, I don't even call myself a life coach. I, really? I, I like to look at myself, dude, as like, like an empowerment artist or um, a, a personal development ally. Um, something about the whole coaching thing, unless you're trying to market, is, is just kind of weird to me because at the end of the day, we're all humans, dude. And, and there's no like particular thing that I can say to anybody, even who's listening right now, that's going to soften the blow other than to really get to know yourself in this time. I think that's a really good opportunity for all of us, you know, and if you haven't fucking walked around the block in a long time, go take a walk around the block, like get to know different hidden aspects of you, maybe aspects of you that have uh, went away long time ago. Who knows? You know, I, I think it's a great opportunity for people dude, to 
kind of get back to that childlike uh, sense. I, I don't know if childlike is the word, but I feel like nobody's working right now. I know there are some people working, of course, but uh, there's a lot that are not working. And, and if you're in the situation, it's, um, I'm sorry. And, uh, and we'll get through this, <laughs> but it's a great opportunity to get to know yourself. Yeah. So uh, yeah, man, I, 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 I would argue though. I, I like that, uh, the childlike analogy and it's not to say that people should behave like children, but it's more so go back to having that, that childlike curiosity and, uh, you know, think exploring yes. things that spark your interests, especially now that we have the time. Uh, you know, I think it's easy and it's, it's, I'd say to a degree justified, you know, for people to want to, you know, uh, feel sorry for themselves or, or wallow in their pity. But at the same time, you know, how long are you going to do that? And, and are you then going to, you know, then rise above past that? So I, I think, you know, that, that childlike sense of, of curiosity, I think is important because, you know, it's going back to our roots and going back to the things that, you know, we oftentimes as adults and, you know, as we grow up, we don't have time to, to venture out and, and really take in the wonders of the world and, and the things that interest us. And uh, you also touched on uh, people finding themselves. I, I think another interesting thing right now is with COVID-19 taking everyone out of work, these these labels that we've identified ourselves as for some people, you know, for years or decades, uh, working in certain positions or certain roles, all of a sudden that label has been ripped off. And now what are yeah. we? Who are we? And I think, you know, being confronted with that question so abruptly out of nowhere is, is understandably difficult. And, and, but at the same time, I think it's, it's recognizing the opportunity to, to explore ourselves a little bit more and maybe finding who we truly are as people. Yeah. And we can even explore that for a minute. What does it mean to find who I am? You know, like, what does it mean to find me? Well, I, you know, it's amazing what you'll do when you're under pressure and you know how much toilet paper you buy and what are you do how are you like like, you'll see aspects of yourself that um are always there but you know i feel like dude when i got out of wrestling uh i got out of wrestling i would say I, i mean off and on but you know when i when i got out of it it was probably about really like four years ago where i was just like i'm i think i'm i don't know but when i got out of there man i couldn't believe how many uh, character traits and, and, and personality things that I picked up along the way of being in the business uh, for the good and the quote unquote bad, you know, I, I, I found myself doing things that I really had to unravel. And it took me, I would say years to kind of even see those aspects and really understand them and understand that those were uh, things I picked up along the way. And that, you know, I, I think we, we do that on a daily basis. We, we pick up so much working the, you know, the, the routine that everybody's going through. And along the way, you pick up these aspects that really don't represent you, but you feel like you have to do it because that's the world we are living in at those times. So I don't know, I to strip that all away. I'm using my story in wrestling as a way to, I guess, articulate what I'm trying to say, because I found a lot of aspects of myself that weren't never me. And a lot of the, um, and a lot of those aspects that I saw made me feel uncomfortable. And I, I actually was mad at myself for a very long time, uh, because I guess I, I was mad. I was, I was, I was frustrated that I didn't see it before, but how could I see it when I was living in the thing that I was living in? And, and, you know, so I just think when this is all stripped away from everybody, which is, it's not just you me it's like everybody literally like you know some people are working yes but we'll we'll talk about to the people that are not and the people that are like it's still this it's weird it's different and gosh what a fucking opportunity to to grow like what an opportunity to see those aspects that you don't normally get I, i don't know i just I feel like I went through that when I got out of wrestling. And even in this, I see other aspects of myself. For me, it's my artistic side. You know, I love to paint growing up. I I always wanted to be a pro wrestler. knew that since the age of four, but I also was an artist too. Like I, and because my dream was so on wrestling, 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 I never looked at those other beautiful aspects of myself and, 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 and put, emphasis on them and, 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 and more interest in them because I was so focused on wrestling. So when I take wrestling away, who am I? Oh, I'm also a kid that really liked the paint a lot and drawing shit. And so even this time has allowed me a lot of time and space to dive deep into that again and 
since doing painting and stuff, I'm like, God, this is so meditative. Like, holy shit, I'm really tapping into aspects of myself, archetypes that I haven't seen in years um only because i have more of this time where i'm not doing a routine type of thing and i i don't know once again i i just i think it's like i think it's kind of interesting and cool and and who knows what will happen and we wish it well but that's life dude life is always throwing things at us it's always there's always a wrench in there somewhere whether it's your fucking car breaking down or whether it's a relationship or <laughs> you know what i mean that's part of the whole process and i think when you can understand that everything is in waves like that from big to hurricanes to virals to yeah. everything you know it, it it you can it just feels like one big video game dude and what an opportunity to just like keep playing the game i'm alive you're alive we're all alive our health you know some of our health are not so good so much. what opportunity to even have good more health like go running or i, I you know like i I just think there's so much opportunity to do things for yourself that you probably never were able to do. Right. No, it's, it's, I like the video game analogy too. It, I think there's always going to be challenges that we're going to have to try to get through to get to the next level, so to speak. Uh, or, or in other terms, there's always going to be bullshit uh, in life. But I think it's one of those rare times in history right now where uh, uh, many of us are, are now playing the same game and on the same level or dealing with the exact same bullshit versus all kinds of a variety of bullshit, <laughs> you know, and, and that, and, and all at the same time, unexpectedly, you know, they're in last the challenge, but I, I think you kind of articulated you know, over the years, you were fortunate to kind of, you know, work, work through some of those uh, self-identification challenges. I'm, I'm taking a course right now where they identify the person we identify ourselves as, as our avatar or the person that we want the world to see yeah. us as. And I think that's important. I think, you know, not taking, it outside yourself is also important and, and not only think about who you want to be as a person, but who, who, who are you, what kind of person do you want other people to see you as? And I think exploring those traits of your personality that maybe, you know, you're wanting to explore more. Now's a good opportunity to start exploring some of those things. I don't know if I'm getting yeah. too much on a soapbox on that or if I, you know, uh, no, no, no. I was thinking about what you were saying. Um, something about how you want people to see you as it's like, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, go against what you're saying, but well, no, I, and, I, and, I, and I realize the way I said yeah, it. Yeah, because ultimately it's about words are limiting. You, words are limiting. Yes. I know where you're going with it, yeah. but but it's 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 being the experience. You know, like just being the experience. I think this is a time where it's always been the time. Let's be honest. There, I think this is a conversation that needs to be had more about becoming yourself and and what it means to be yourself. And if that if you're not a vulnerable person because you feel like being vulnerable is a sign of weakness, then learn how to be vulnerable. If, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're a uh, vulnerable person that needs to put your foot down once in a while a little bit more and, and you're afraid to do things, maybe put down your foot. I don't think I use those words right, but you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's so many if, just aspects to, to, to play with. I mean, dude, life is, um, life is clay. Yeah. It's clay, man. We're molding it. I, I, dude, come on. You and I both have seen it. Like, how many times have you changed in your life growing up? How many, you know, worst days of your life have you ever had in your life? Like, how many? <laughs> you know, it, it's yeah. it's all part of. It. We're in that. I think when we're when you're in that, I think <laughs> it's like a. I think I think, but it's not. I think it's just what feels right to me today is. Just enjoy the process while you're here. You know, like life is fun, man. If you think about all the things you've ever done, uh, it's crazy. It's all crazy. You're a freaking psychopath. <laughs> How many times have you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. I think about all this shit in my life, man. I'm like, holy cow. How many different characters or how many different Jamins were there along the way that has grown and evolved? And, it, you know, the, the sun goes down, it comes up, it gets dark, and then you find light in the dark. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of complexities to this. And I think when, just for me, once again, when you, are focusing on that perspective um it doesn't seem hard it just seems more like all right i'm just doing it you know and that doesn't mean i don't get frustrated it doesn't mean i don't get like, like moody or or whatever but that's that's what comes with the territory of being alive you yeah. know and i think 
having this conversation around like the beauty of it all can maybe help shift something. I don't know. You know, it depends on what you value your life. I, you know, it's hard. It, it, sometimes I laugh when I say shit like this because I'm like, yeah, but it's easy for you to say, dude, you, you grew up poor, but you had a really good like family. Like you had such a good family, like everyone's supportive, big family, over 200 of us. Like it was just a crazy, it, you know, it, it's just a different vibe. So like, maybe it's easier for me, but I, I don't know. I, I just think everyone can do it if we're having the conversation more often about ways of how to do it. You know, it's like someone breaks up with somebody. What does everyone do? Oh, he's an asshole, you know, or she's an asshole. Or it's like you're not really helping anybody by by like shitting on someone else and, and, yeah. and, and always throwing your experiences towards the external. Like, you know, your experiences are, are all internal. At least that's how I see it. It's, it's almost I think like it's everything. Like a, yeah, I was gonna say it's almost like a defense mechanism yeah it's 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 the sense of um not owning what you know you should own you know i i don't i'm not saying this is the truth i'm just saying for me when i own my bullshit i do better like, like even if i didn't do anything wrong even if something happened to me outside of my control i still take responsibility for my experience i have to because i've made plenty of decisions in my life that probably weren't the fucking best either you know so like what, you know, when we when we play this victim role, instead of having a conversation of, okay, how can I become better through this moment? Or how can I, you know, and not to say people don't do that either. I know everyone does it in their own way. But th once again, th this conversation just floating around could be better than always blaming something outside of you, whether it was in your control or not. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think that that's a way of, I think that's, oh, you're always going to trap yourself in a karmic hell there yeah. where you can't escape it because that is just a pattern. And so once again, going kind of go back to overall, what we're saying sometimes, or what I'm trying to express is we're in patterns and sometimes we're aware of them. And sometimes we're not. That's why we have friends. That's why we have our experiences to show us our own rights and our own wrongs, not just what's socially there right and wrong, but what's right and wrong to you. Like deep down, like you could find so much shit in just your experience. You can go to your job and, and how many, I, I can only imagine right now how many people have left their work who only talked shit about it the entire time and now miss it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it, it we as humans value that type of connection and, and we are longing for it. We just are always looking for reasons to complain about living. Now what are we doing? We're forced to not work and we're living. And it's fundamental. We're living. Yeah. And that's what it is. And so no matter what you were living, if you were at work and, and maybe this, maybe this, 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 this crazy time is showing us a bigger perspective of that. If, we are having the conversation. Right. I don't know. It's true. It's I mean, just, I mean there's, there's certainly two ways we could come out of this, better or worse. And, you know, and I think opening up is, is a big part of coming out of it better. I definitely think that. Uh, you touched on something that I really liked uh, was uh, talking about being vulnerable. And I wanted to ask your opinion on this. I have my opinion. Do you think there's a difference between being vulnerable and being a victim? It's a really good question. Uh, well, for me, every everything, man, is I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. because it, it because the nuances of someone else's life is so different from mine. So even if I said yes or no to that, so I don't know. Um, I, can I ask more clarity? Yes. Of what you mean in that, so I can gain a better understanding. So I guess what I was getting, I, I was, I was, I was going to get to a point in that I, I think there is a difference between being a vulnerable and being a victim, and, and it comes down to whether or not you choose to empower yourself. I think to be a victim places the blame on others and uh, situations and people and anything that is not yourself versus being vulnerable is the opposite. It's saying it's all on me, you know, and, and I have to take ownership of it. Uh, yeah, t to me, vulnerability is um, the act of expressing how you really uh feel um one way or the other um in a compassionate type of way in a way that's not threatening um that's not hateful uh i remember 
I, I don't know. Vulnerability is a lesson my mom taught me a lot about. Yeah. And she didn't use that word necessarily, but uh, I learned later on that's what vulnerability is, just to express yourself. And, like, I remember, like, d- in getting in trouble for things in school growing up, and and maybe it was something I was aware of or wasn't aware of, but it, when it was time to face, like, a principal or a teacher, and it it seemed so scary for the other kids that were in trouble with me. I remember just saying, yeah, I did that. I fucked up. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it like that, but you know, Hey, I messed up and, and I'm will if, if you're willing to like, forgive me, I'll, I'll, I'd like to try again and not mess that up. Like that's a vulnerable moment. You know, that's a, I think, I think just like expressing yourself always like that. I, I we are, we as humans, at least from as far as I can see right now, we as humans are evolving there. I think, I think people are becoming, uh, more vulnerable. Um, yeah. Or, or express, I don't know. Maybe it's always, I don't know. <laughs> like right. maybe, maybe I've learned so much about myself in that time that it seems like that. Right. I, I don't, what does Gandhi say? Be the change you want to see or some shit. Like, I, I don't know. Like, but, but, but maybe that's what's happening sometimes. Cause I feel like the more I practice these things, uh, just mindfulness in general, uh, you, you see, archetypes that are even contradicting sometimes but yet it only works for you and the decisions you make today works for you and that might contradict tomorrow's decisions but yet that's what you needed that day to clear that level you know video game (laughs) like so so then you're not looking at life so linear you're not looking at it like well yesterday i did this but today this doesn't make sense like that doesn't like I don't know. It's um, I don't know if I'm articulating what I'm. I don't even know if I'm explaining it right. I, I, th- I like, think so. Is, is this accurate to say? Is is would you say that the more that you can really be introspective and and learn more about just life and yourself in general, the more you realize it's a lot more complex. It's not as simple as I think. Uh, you know, it's. I, I'll put it this way. I think the more we learn, we while our 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 goal is to seek answers. In actuality, when we seek out knowledge, we're left with more questions. And that, I think, at the end of the day, is something that we have to learn. That is the point, and that we have to be okay with that. Uh, and, and, I, and I guess to, to an extent, I, I think, you know, for instance, I went back to school to become a doctor in physical therapy, and I thought, you know, okay, I, once I become a doctor, then I'm going to know all these things, and I'm going to have all this knowledge, and I'm going to have a lot more answers. And I learned the more I've learned in, in that or just in life in general, the more I'm left with more questions and the more realization of, oh, man, I don't know nearly as much as I thought I did, and I'm left with more and more questions. But I, I, I try to wet that appetite for curiosity and, and trying to explore more of those questions versus being defeated and feeling like, man, I just, I don't know anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, per- and perhaps that's where people's pain comes from. Like, uh, you know, I think about anytime I'm in pain, it's probably usually because I don't understand something or I feel inferior to something or because I thought I knew something and I did, mm-hmm. you know, there's this sense of like, when you just, curiosity is a good word or not knowing is a good, maybe a good word. I don't know. Like these are things like right. you, you, you gotta, you know, hmm, let me think about this for me. It is looking at each day as an experiment. Like it's not so heavy as we think. Like I, that's, that's for me. Now I'm going to go into a topic real fast and we don't have to stay here long no, because it's, it's, it's a weird topic. But for me growing up, I had a lot of out of body experiences and they were frightening. And, um, I don't know how to explain it. I want, I want, I don't want to be in here too long. Cause it's, I know it's a weird topic for people. It, and, it's and weird, but I, don't want but to... I will say from a medical standpoint that there are, you know, probably literally thousands of, of documented cases. And I've, and I've heard of friends and family that have had these type of experiences. So I certainly think, you know, anyone watching either has either had one of those experiences or personally know someone that has had these kind of experiences. So certainly they are things that do for sure certainly happen. But, yeah. It's just, it's authentic to me. And for me to even be talking about it, um, the, the more I realize this as I get older, as each day goes by, I'm like, Oh, this, that's something that's really personal to you, dude. Maybe you don't even have to express it, but I'm going to express, it. I'll be vulnerable. Like, <laughs> like for me, it's, it's, it's I, see out of body experiences gave me a lot of lessons though. That's why I, I, I want to talk about them because as a kid, I had them my entire life. I'd say since the age of five to now, and I'll tell you the difference. When I was younger, for about four years, 
Um, I would say it was like eight to 11 or 12. I always forget, but I was having these experiences where I'd be out of my body and I would see these like shadow looking figures and they would be heavy sitting on my chest. Felt like they're choking me. It felt very threatening all the time. And I used to freak out. So when I was a kid, I was afraid to like go to sleep at night knowing that I was going to have these night terrors. And my mom would always say, dude, just like, just like when you go to bed, like tell yourself, you're just going to stare at it and not be afraid of it. And I used to always like get blown away when she'd say that it used to like annoy me because I'm like, mom, you're not the one that's going through it. Like it feels so real. Like I would try to explain it to her and she's like, yeah, but just like stare at it. Like just stare at it. Well, one day, dude, when I was, um, yeah, like I said, I, it was when I was a young teenager, I had an experience where I saw this like Doberman pincher looking thing. It was like drooling and it looked intense. It looked like a, a, a demon, uh, very intense looking. And I had this moment of saying, all right, just going to stare at it. And I started staring at it, dude. And the more I stared at it, it started to dissipate. And then I had a thought, wow, am I creating that all along? And then all of a sudden I felt this like sense of freedom. And then after that, I was having experiences where I was flying, experiencing different colors, whatever. I mean, I don't want to get into all that, but the, the lesson in these, the lesson that I learned is, well, my mind was set to fear before I went to sleep. By the way, when I was a kid in elementary school, I was placed in special education classes. So my own, my own perspective of myself uh, wasn't great. I, I always thought I was too dumb. I, I, I didn't understand why my brothers were in normal classes and I wasn't, and it made me feel inferior. And there was all these feelings that I never took into account until I got older, until I, like, I can recall this story to you so easily for myself now because I see it so clearly and, and I couldn't do it back then. And it was because I had to go through heaps of experience to even understand the tapestry I'm looking at. You know, you're creating it as you go along. You don't really get a chance to see it until you take a step back, right? right. So for so for for me, um, I, I pay respect and honor to my out of body experiences because I think those have helped me understand that life, this moment, what we're doing, and this is just for me, by the way, um, is like a dream. You know, I look back at wrestling and all the matches I've ever had that were fucking awesome for me and 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 uh, even the friendships I've gained, you know, our you know, I look at all of it, dude. We grew up basically in our 20s together, Nick. Like, you know, we yeah. came up in wrestling together, dude. And you look back now, it's it's very beautiful tapestry, you know, it's it's cool. Um you I, I I hold it very dear and and I think that's a mindset and I think looking at life like a dream and, and understanding that it's hey, it's not Yes, there was the scary bad guy on me when I was a kid, but I was, you know, if you just stare at your experiences, if you just like live through the bad and allow yourself to feel the bad, then it will dissipate. It will get the fuck out of your way. It has to because you are choosing to look at it. You know, that's the, I think that's the difference. And I think that's why people struggle is because. And I'm not saying I don't struggle. I'm just saying I know I'm struggling because I'm being an egotistical asshole about something that I think I know or something. And the minute I realize it, I make it my job to fucking correct it. And 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 it's and and, there will, and that will continue throughout all my life. Like I, you know, I understand that. So I just, I'm all I'm saying is I think these are some of the complexities of life, or at least um, this is how it's worked for me, and I, this is how I see it. But I definitely don't expect someone to go have an out-of-body experience tomorrow and not experience their own experience in that. You know, this is only through what I've learned through being Jamin, just being me. You know, like, it's, these are, uh, but, I don't know. Yeah. No, no, it's, it, it's good. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's not, it's, you know. not, it's not at all blah, blah, blah. Because there's two big things that came out of what you said. Number one, and I think if you break it down on its most visceral level, really it comes down to facing your fears. Because that's really... If we break it down to really what's all that you did, it was facing that fear. And for you, it was that, that night terror. Um, and I'd even say I, I would take it a step further and say one thing. I didn't know that story about you and how you kind of faced your fear like that. But you did something that uh, we sometimes use in, uh, in the medical field. It's called systematic desensitization. And it's basically uh, you're over time desensitizing yourself to a fear in a systematic way. And, and you did it just, you know off off just of uh just you know just literally trying to look at it 
Uh, but there's other ways you can do that that we see in the medical field. Like, for instance, if someone's scared of spiders, then a way like a psychologist might systematically desensitize them is first they get them to talk about spiders. Then they get them to write about spiders. Then they get them to think about spiders. Then they sit them in a room where there's a spider across the room from them. Cool. And, then, and then they sit them in the room where the spider's in a cage right next to them. And then they actually have you know the spider out. Then they actually touch the spider. Then they kiss it. Well, maybe not kiss it, but you know what I mean. And it's something that happens over weeks and, and, and months or time, depending on, on the level of fear that person has. Uh, and then in the clinic, like as a physical therapist, we sometimes do similar things like with uh, people that have had chronic pain and fear of movement. We might have them do the same things where they have to think about doing a movement that they are too scared to do because of pain. Then they have to write about yeah. that because of pain. Then they have to imagine it because of pain. And then over weeks and months, all of a sudden, they're, they are able to get to a point where they're able to do things that they never imagined themselves doing because they started facing those fears. So in a weird way, I think really anyone could relate to that because it all comes down to facing a fear. And I think every person has a fear that they could do a better job facing. And that, and that, and I think that's, I think that's a really awesome uh, information and advice because if you, then if you take that to any part of your life, okay, maybe I have a problem with this. Maybe I have a problem with that. Or maybe I have a fear in this. Maybe I have a fear in that. Just look it up more. And the more you like really learn about it, I think some of us don't even learn about it sometimes, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, um, but, but I think that's very good information. That's, I, I didn't know that that's a very fascinating thing. And that's something I'm going to practice now. Like if there's something I want to really look at, like do things like that, but I, it, your mind can be, uh, shifted at any moment. I'll give you one more story. When I was yeah. 13, still teenager. Uh, I str like I said, I still struggled in school, like learning. I couldn't retain information. It was, it was such a fucking struggle, dude. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I went home crying and making deals with God. And I was, I used to say like, dude, the stuff I would say to like, I, when I'm walking home by myself, I'd be like, God, if I, if I study really hard, will you help me get in wrestling when I'm older? Like I was always so fascinated about wrestling, you know, and it's funny how it all works out in funny ways. But, yeah. uh, no, there was this, my mom, used to always like my mom is uh just big fucking shout out to my mom dude because she is the reason i am who i am amongst all the people i met in my life of course but my mom gave me the fundamental mindset where she used to say dude i know you're having a bad fucking day but tomorrow you're gonna wake up and you're gonna say i'm gonna do the best i can don't say I'm going to have a perfect day. Don't say I'm going to be good today. Don't say I'm going to have a bad day. Just say, I'm going to be the best I can. And I remember, I do it. I'll never forget. There was this fucking time when I was walking in the winter and school, like going to school and I, I come from Buffalo. So the, the weather is like oh, crazy, but I, I remember always having these conversations with myself, like, like these little conversations and, uh, I would always talk shit about like, oh, fuck, I gotta go to school, I'm fucking tired. Like, you know, you say the things that you say. And one day I, I, I said, you know, I might as well take my mom's advice. I'm in seventh grade now. I'm starting to get like, I was getting more, the older I got, the more anxiety I got about like growing up and like not feeling like I was picking up information quick enough. I was always so behind years and years behind most people but my teachers kept passing me because everyone liked me <laughs> it's fucking it's it's really crazy dude <laughs> but i got lucky man i got really lucky but you learn from that too right like let me side note like that was love they were giving me so you learn acceptance that like that taught me like acceptance in other ways i realize that now just part of my story but i would just tell myself all right my mom said it be the best you can today i'm gonna be the best i can and i would do it almost sarcastically all right, I'm gonna have the best day I can. I'm gonna just be the best I can. And I go to school. And then all of a sudden, the day was a little bit better. And then the next day I do it again. Right, I'm gonna be the best I can. Then the day gets even better. And then things started like changing right away. So just to kind of go into mindset and like how easy it is to kind of take yourself out of things if you're willing and vulnerable enough to admit it to yourself, whatever it is that you want to work on. That's 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 another thing. So no, I like that. Yeah. And, and I think going into each day with the thought of, yeah, no day is ever going to be perfect. But no day is really, you know, imperfect. I mean, there it's imperfect, but it's not perfectly imperfect. You know what I mean? Literally not everything goes wrong. I mean, it's, we, we still have air in our lungs. We still can, you know, walk across the room. So there are still things that, you know, we can, you know, at least appreciate that we have, at least the gifts that we have. 
the only imperfect that someone gets is when someone just doesn't get what they want. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's where all the stress comes from. I didn't get what I want today. You you, you had an expectation <laughs> that was not met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and you know, um, that's the that's what happens. Yeah, that's what happens when you think of yourself too high too, mm -hmm. instead of just a star in the fucking world. You know what I mean? Like when you think you're the fucking sun. Well, everyone's the sun. Yeah. It's all coming from a place of power. And so when the sun doesn't get what it wants, or when you think you don't get what you want, it's gonna you're struggling suddenly. I couldn't tell you every time I was mad in wrestling, which is because I didn't get what I wanted. Right. I mean, let's be fair. I probably overvalued myself as a young guy in certain ways. And don't we all? Like we're hungry. We're trying to put on that 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 confidence. And and so I'm just you apply that to anything. It's most of our struggle is really because we just didn't get what we wanted today. Right. And I find that interesting as I get older because I know whenever I'm in a funky mood, <laughs> I know it's because I just didn't get what I wanted. Right. But that's, you know, like, but then there's got to be a point where you're willing to say, okay, I didn't get what I want. Just like, right, move. I got to live. Right. No matter what, you got to get up and do life anyway. Tomorrow, you got to wake up and you got to do this. You got to do the thing anyway again. So, right. I don't know. It, it's, it's making the choice whether you're going to grow from it or, or let it fester and let it, you know, you know. En envelop your your anger and, and that's never a good thing and so then with that being said choice is a superpower isn't it yeah and choice is a throne we all sit on because it's your choice if you want to have a shitty day what you seek you shall find i don't know who said that quote but i know that um i you know i guess that's what we're talking about in life sometimes is sometimes you just see more of you through your experiences. All the things you condemn in others are aspects of you. Let's be honest. I don't want to hear the bullshit of, you know, I know we're all different in certain ways, but come on. We all are scallywags at the end of the day. We're all just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sound, we're all a bunch of little like troublemakers. Word, I don't think the word scallywag is used often enough nowadays. Just as, a, as an aside, that has nothing to do with the conversation. I'm glad you worked it in, though. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, well, okay. I'll give you. I'll give you. Can I give you the origins of scallywag for me? Yeah. Scallywag came from an out of body experience one time. Really? How so? Somebody was. Yeah. Uh, it was like something was talking to me. By the way, these are all very interesting in their own right, in their right, own right. ways. They're ever. They're never really the same. But the, the only thing I could tell you about these, are, it feels like you're awake. It feels like you're just as awake as right now, and you're just in a different, sometimes different world. And it's not so human where yeah. you're like. Doing this as a point of yeah. clarification, are you talking about out out of just out of body experiences, or is this is this a form of lucid dreaming that you're referring to? It, you know, this is interesting. Okay, so this is an interesting. This is where words are limiting. When you call it just a dream, it's almost like you get more dreamy experiences. When you start taking it in as part of you, you start experiencing the real archetypes of it. I think that's why certain people can hit certain levels and certain people can't because they brush it off. I'm not, that's not an insult. I just right. literally think it's what you focus on just grows bigger no matter what. It's like putting a magnifying glass. And when I was a kid, um, I didn't consider them dreams. Mm -hmm. But so like, because I put so much emphasis on how real they felt, I think I, I kept reoccurring, kept reoccurring, kept reoccurring. Um, so, but I've had dream like experiences too, but none like, they're 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 just a hair different. They're gotcha. um they're, they're different just from. You feel like you're in the room with it. You mm -hmm. feel like you're, and sometimes you're not in the room. Like I couldn't tell you how many times I woke up and saw him, like turned around and saw myself sleeping in bed, and it looked like a shell. It didn't look like Jamin. I didn't say, "Oh, that's me." I just looked at it and had this knowing that, "Oh, that's a role I play." It's that's. It's that's a different conversation, but right, that's right. that's part of that's why I, I talk about this these stories because it's really a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. It's a part of what I experienced and what feels real to me, and that helps me see through through the lens, I suppose, that I'm seeing through. And then that, you know, um, but yeah. So to uh, go back to the scallywag is is uh, something was talking to me one time, and it was it was just. I don't remember, you just hear things and you hear things. I, I, I don't remember the exact, like, 
vibe I got that game, but it just said like, ah, da -da 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 -da. people are all little scallywags. Da -da 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 -da. And I remember waking up and, and like telling like everybody, I think it was like even Shiloh. I don't remember who it was at the time, but like just telling somebody, dude, I had this out of body experience and this like angel or something's like talking about scallywags. And <laughs> it felt very ancient <laughs> to me. Like it just felt like ancient, you know, like it was just the, the word. It was just a very right, odd word to use. It, and also knowing just, you, um, I've, I've never heard you use that word before so that is interesting that you know yeah i threw, whole, i started throwing it in yeah, yeah almost, <laughs> almost like a whole different entity was speaking to you in a sense you know what i mean so that's just that's really cool uh do you do you feel the entity that was speaking to you there do you feel that was a part of you or do you feel that was truly a, a completely different entity you know uh i've gone back and forth with all this stuff my whole life um <laughs> you know i i guess I will say, uh, I don't know, but I will say that um, much like my experiences in waking life, like today, the day I have, those serve me just as much. Those are, it's like, yeah, so when I look at others and I, I'm either judging them or commending them or whatever, when I do that, I know I'm looking at aspects of myself. I, at least I take responsibility for that. Um, I, same thing with, with, with these experiences too, on the other side, like, I feel like I'm, I'm probably looking at aspects of myself that are ancient. I'm probably seeing other things. I've seen like angel looking things. I, I actually um, was just telling someone about this recently. I had a, uh, an experience where I was like in a big field and I was full of armor and like, but it didn't look like me, but it was just like this, like I was big, like, I don't know how tall I was, but like giant size. And I was in a field of all these other people uh, that looked like dead angels. It looked, it did not like pretty angels, not little white angels, like literally like just like gladiator stuff. You know, wow. it, it was very intense. And I remember looking around and saying, I did this. I did this with my bad decision making. Like I was almost like a commander or something. And I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, when I look at that, I don't, I'm not taking it so literal, but I, right. I look at the, what maybe that was a time, maybe that was a time when I wasn't, didn't have the right morals or the right values, or maybe there's still morals and values that I can work on as I, as I'm in this life. And that was a representation of that. Yeah. I try not to get too much into the, uh, breaking it down because right, I right. think, it's almost like it's I think sometimes, it. yeah, I think we say? do that. And I think it gets us more confused. I think it's more about experiencing it and, and the thinking about it is a process that actually has nothing to do with, with the experience that it's actually given your whole entire energy, your whole entire soul. Like I experienced that. I felt it. It's in my being moving forward. Um, not everything always has to be broken down. And I, I think that's why uh, it, people struggle too a little bit, but that's just me because I was a kid that struggled learning. So detail oriented stuff I couldn't pick on. Um, I could only look at the tapestry and say, Oh, this is the picture I see instead of knowing understanding the details you know so um it's just the way our minds work but but yeah i guess to i don't know if that answers your question but no i just want a little scattering. more insight it was it's it's interesting and i'm always curious to hear you talk about those experiences i know you've been really working on a lot of the the meditation and, and a lot of inner uh you know summoning you know energy from the inside and and you've been uh well read and and educated on on subjects of uh more I almost hesitate to use the word because uh, I think some, as soon as they hear it, they feel like it's it's uh, you know not as um, you know mainstream knowledge, but but in a metaphysical sense. Uh, but uh, to me, metaphysical only means the way you can transcend uh, the energy from beyond your your physical shell of a body. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does because to me it does. And uh, let me make this point. This is why I always kind of freaking pay respect to my out of body experiences because. I think what I learned from there is when you, um, like in a dream, uh, people could relate to this. When you have a dream, you usually see picture after picture. It's like one minute you're bowling. The next minute you're in a house, like right. next minute you're, you see the random person in high school that you never talked to, but yet you had a dream of them. Um, to me, when you see quick pictures, it's cause your mind is doing that. So what I've learned through out of body ex uh, experience, uh, I hate using that term, but just, you know, doing my thing, I, everything's thought responsive. Mm -hmm. So if you say, I want to go skiing, you're skiing. Um, I want to 
you know, experience being rich. You're in a castle, you're rich. And sometimes you have access to these quick thoughts and you could experience it, but only like a couple at a time. You can't like do it and just walk around and fly. Like I, at least not, I haven't experienced that. I've experienced flying, but not on my own accord. I've experienced flying so high that I got nervous. I got I started thinking like, Oh my God, what if I fall? And I fell. So I, oh, you experience, um, I think, I think the mind uh, is very much like that in the waking life where when you set your mind to something, it will come about in a very slow organic manner i think that's what earth is all about i think that's why we feel so much pain and we feel glory and but when you're outside your body you can go from seeing a fucking dog that looks like a dover that looks like a devil and then say i'm i'm gonna stare at you and the mind sets it to something else and that's how i was trying to relate earlier with the story my mom and stuff did for me because i it just goes back to mindset you, you know your yes imagination is a tool or a weapon it could be a weapon against yourself or a weapon against your own life where you're, you're piercing new realities through your, through your belief system. You know, imagination can help you with so many things. It can help you. I used to imagine, dude, um, when I was a kid, like if I was in a, I wanted to be a wrestler so bad. I wanted to be a pro wrestler so fucking bad that when I was failing tests, which were all the time, I always imagined it at a point in my life where like I imagined it like I was in the ring and somebody was beating me up at that moment. And it's like, Oh, like I was so enthralled yeah. in wrestling that like, and then when the good thing, when a girl smiled at me, it was like, I, I came off the ropes and I got the guy like, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it really manifested for me when I became older. Is that manifestation? Is that, is that me just focusing? Who, who knows what the fuck it doesn't matter. It happened. Yeah. And I think that was through imagination. So sometimes we use our imagination as a weapon against ourselves. We, we make assumptions based upon our experiences or whatever. And we create these little fairy tales about what it could be or what it should be or this. And then all of a sudden it gets harder. Mm -hmm. And I think when you can imagine yourself, I don't want to get too woo, woo, but like, if you imagine yourself as like a, like a fucking Dragon Ball Z character, like powering up and shit. Like I used to do that, like during, um, powerlifting oh competitions. <laughs> Dude, I used to like in my mind, I saw like myself as like just like flying. Um, even at OVW, dude, uh, I don't remember who asked me this, but someone asked me one time because you know, I would come out and I, I was one of the more popular guys there and I'd get a good reaction. And people say, How do you, you know, how do you get that reaction as a baby face? Like, how do you, how do you do that? I'm like, dude, just like I fucking pray before, like, I, I, I just like meditate on the people going crazy before I even go out there. Like, and then it would just happen, you know? And, and I, once again, I think that's all because of I'm, I'm using the imagination. I'm not saying I did that. I'm not saying I manifested it. I'm saying there's a belief system in who I am. I'm the experience. I get the experience. Yeah. I'm seeking to be a piece of shit in life. I get shitty things come to me in life. I, I self-criticize myself. I see more self-criticism. You know, whatever you're doing, it's, it's, it's happening. It's, it's, it's so, yeah. So to go back to choice and imagination and positive thinking and all this stuff, it, to me, it's, it really has a lot to do with your imagination and, and what you're seeing. Uh, but once again, that only works for the kid that was like me. That's not going to work for every human being i guess you have to get in touch with that you told me years ago dude i'll never forget this it was a study you said in um i think it was psychology or it was a ted talk or something you saw where somebody goes in the mirror and they're like ah yeah. they make like these well what's crazy about that is before i knew that was even a thing i used to do that as a kid really i used to like imagine myself as like freaking the best wrestler in the world and just looking at myself and being like sometimes i'd imagine myself even as the devil as a god as an angel as a, as a warrior as a all type whatever it was i would do these things in the mirror and what i guess i didn't know until you brought clarity to me this was years ago you told me this yeah. i i i literally was like oh my god like there's something to that yeah like so there's there's something to this shit in life where you can empower yourself through the simplest of things. You know, if you're, if you're washing dishes and you don't like to wash dis dishes, maybe you like draw a smiley face on it with the soap and then fucking rinse it. Like create like moments of happiness for yourself because that's a choice. Instead of saying, ah, I gotta clean the dishes. Ah, that's where it gets difficult, you know? So imagination, I, I guess to me that it's acting out imagination. Yeah. 
and to clarify, it, it did come from a TED talk. They were talking about a study, and just because I think this is really good, especially since you you took that, uh, and it really sounds like it, you know, was empowering to hear. But uh, and it, it did it empower was. me to hear this as well. Uh, so I believe the study was they were looking at people, and it may have been a both, but it was either or both uh, students that had a test coming up or uh, people that were applying for a job. And uh, it was a randomized controlled trial, and they broke them up into people that either did this activity or didn't do the activity. But the activity was they literally just stood in front of a mirror with their arms up overhead, and it was only like 30 seconds or a minute, and they just had to say positive affirmations like, I'm going to I'm gonna uh, pass this test. I'm going to get this job. I'm going to do this. I'm awesome. I can do this. And literally it was just putting the hands in the air in front of the mirror and just for 30 seconds or a minute – uh, hyping themselves up and I think it was only like for a week or something like that they found that the people that did that performed way better than the people that didn't do that and it was literally just taking that extra time to uh, do an affirmation and, and empower themselves in the mirror it was yeah crazy. because you're using space and time for your own benefit that's right and that kind of goes back to all this like this is that I mean I love this example so I, I'm so glad we're talking about that I'll, I'll never forget when you told me that I remember it hit me like a ton of bricks I was like holy shit I do shit like that like I do it all the time like dude I used to freaking just fight like the, the movement I'm doing right now is like what I practice but I imagine like a fireball in my hand and I'm casting a summon or when you know I don't know if you ever were like prayed with us before shows in the locker room yeah. you know we just I, like like for me, I like to call upon like angels and shit, but like in my mind, it's not even like I'm thinking about a me versus God thing. I'm literally imagining I am casting a summon. If you ever played like Final Fantasy, <laughs> like casting a summon and, and all the angels will surround you and they make all the, and, and, but yeah, you're just holding hands with a bunch of people and you're just talking some words. But in my mind, that's what's happening. And I just think, uh, I think there's something to all that and in the mirror and, and however you want to see yourself, man, I, it's very easy to, I say this, but it's very easy to empower yourself. I, I know, I'm, I know it's, it's probably not for a lot, but I really think it is. And I think if we have more of that conversation, a lot of us can see more of that versus I wish I could see that, but you know, I mean, yeah. I, whenever I say, but I know I'm like, ah, I got to figure that out. You know, it means, yeah. means I'm coming up with an excuse to not do something, yeah. you know, but you, you got to talk about it. Right. You got to figure out what those butts are. Okay. I, I would do this, but all right, whatever that butt is, you got to figure out how to get rid of it because that butt is essentially what's holding, holding you back in a sense. As soon as you say, but I, I like that. I, that's a trigger for me too. As soon as I hear myself out loud, say blah, 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 but I'm like, oh shit. All right, whatever I'm about to say needs to change. <laughs> you know? Yeah, sometimes mine will just come out and then the other person will say, with the, like, yeah, but, but what? I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, I'm just going <laughs> to... Like, I'm like... Yeah. I like that. I, I, I did want to go back and touch on something real quick, too. And, and I yeah. think uh, you were talking about how your mom used to tell you to just do the best you can. And, uh, you know, it won't be perfect, but just do the best you can. Uh, to take a step... Uh, Further or to continue on that point, I, I again, I, both of us are taking you know extra reading books and taking extra courses and learning these new insights. So I had an insight from a course, or I think it was a book actually. I read a couple weeks ago, uh, and it was oh actually it, it was a course. Uh, they said you know we we try to think of our lives of things that we've accomplished or haven't accomplished in the context of we won or we lost or winning or losing, uh, but that actually limits us in our ability to take control of our lives. And really it's not a matter of winning or losing, but it's a matter of being more ahead or behind. And and we tend to take, you know, one thing that may have put us behind in a day is it ruining the entire day and we lost that day. But in actuality, you know, we may have won other parts of the day and didn't see it that way. So there's two things that they broke it down as is one, don't think of the day as either winning or losing. Think of, you know, maybe an hour of each part of the day. Sure, maybe this last hour something bad happens. Well, that hour's lost, but that's okay. You might be or not lost, but you got behind that hour. So use use your next hour to get ahead and use the next hour to get ahead. So I think if you break it down instead of, you know, the whole day's ruined or the whole day's great, you know, thinking in ultimates like that, I think, is thoughtful thinking. And instead of thinking of how, how can I get a little more ahead or a little more behind each hour uh, is, is more realistic and, and more tangible. And it's easier to take, you know, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And you just keep, you know, chomping away at what you can do in the here and now. That, yeah, that's a great, that's a, that's great, uh, practical advice, you know, um, 
Yeah, I, I there there's so many. Uh, I never looked at it from the hour, so I find that like super. I'm super intrigued by that. I, I'm actually have to think about that later and get back to you on my thoughts because yeah, it's, it's, I think that's a really powerful, simplistic way of um, understanding yourself and 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 what you really want. Uh, there was something you said that that triggered me, and now I forgot about it. So. I guess I'm not going to be able to make the point I wanted to make. Is it about uh, or behind versus winning or losing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. You know, I think it. It. Well, okay. Well, either way, uh, we'll even talk about that. Being ahead and behind, like, you know, what does success really mean to to one? You know, success. So for me, success is like if I write a list of things to do and I get them done. Like, fuck, yeah, I had a good day. Like, I was successful. But even if you're behind, I don't know. There's something about feeling, um, I, I, I'm having multiple thoughts at once, dude. But one of them was, it might be off topic, but when you're, it's like when you're behind this illusion that you're behind, uh, it's like creating new pathways to, to get out of that. I'm, I'm, I, I had a... I don't know. I had a, a thought and it, I, it slipped. So that's all right. We're, we're going to move forward. We're going to move forward. Yeah. Uh, and, and another thing that, uh, and this was a book I read, I think it was the energy bus by John Gordon. I don't know if you've read that book. It's a great book. If you haven't, uh, I'd finish it though. I'll let you borrow it. Uh, but he, he, in the book talks about the, there's a, a technique called the one great golf shot technique. And it talks about, and I'm not a golfer, but I can imagine, you know, golfers doing this and it's saying, you know, when you go home at the end of playing golf with your friends or whatever, you tend to think about that one really great shot that you made. You may have made a hundred really bad shots during that round of golf, but you think about that one that just felt really good to uh, to hit, and, and you got it. And I think uh, in the book it talks about how we should really apply that same principle to life. Instead of going to bed and thinking of, oh, all this went wrong, all this went bad, instead challenging ourselves at the end of the day of, okay, what was my one great shot today that I made? You know, whether it was making a phone call or uh, completing a task or, you know, it can be whatever. But thinking of the one thing that you did to get ahead versus all the things that you may have done to get behind. This was what I wanted to say, and you just said it. So isn't it funny how information yeah. still it came to me? But what I was going to say is... is which I, for me, what helps is complimenting yourself at the end of the day, instead of like, like, couldn't tell you how many times, like I used to shit on myself before bed and say, oh, you could have done better. And, uh, and, you know, your match could have been good or whatever. Like, and, and when you go to bed and, and you're like, you know, what am I proud of myself for today? Like, what did I do? That was actually, um, that was, that was good for me. And, you know, maybe writing that down or, or uh, you know, it worked for me for the longest time, dude. Uh, and I know it's so corny, but like, dude, I like, I have like a gratitude book. Uh, and I'm not saying it's like, say five things you're grateful for. Like, I literally like have this book where I will, whatever I'm feeling grateful for that day. Like, and, and it's always different. And, and a lot of the time it's the same stuff, but like to write it down, just like, man, I'm just grateful for this day. I'm grateful that I'm, I'm alive. Thank you for my daughter. Thank you for my family. Like just that. To, to to express it even i guess if you don't even write it down just to say it out loud or something like i feel like that is one of the biggest things that has helped me um in 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 time just in general like it was always just a a good little tool i'm not saying it's going to change your life but it's certainly gonna if you're looking for ways where you struggle uh finding optimism then i think these are simplistic ways to get yourself to an optimistic state of mind because it's going to take time. It's like a muscle that has to grow. Uh, I think people forget that, that sometimes, you know, when they're, I think, I think people don't allow themselves sometimes to, to really just feel pain and that's good. It's good to feel pain. It's good yeah. to feel it and, and move forward in it and, and tell yourself I'm going to move forward. And it's just a game. It's one thing. It's, oh, sorry. I, it goes all in the mindset and, but complimenting yourself, what you said, Nick, was awesome because that is that is one way you're going to break through the chains, your own chains, because you're holding them anyway. Yeah, and you but, put them there with your imagination. And and I'd say you added an extra layer onto that, and that layer is gratitude because I, I'm a firm believer that it's really hard, if not impossible, to feel anything else except for 
being grateful when you're truly being thankful for the things in your life that you're you're trying to feel grateful for. You know, you can't be depressed and grateful at the same time to an extent. Uh, and it's funny you say that because I, I challenge myself to do that every morning. In fact, I have a uh, literally a, a, a piece of uh, sticky paper on my mirror in the bathroom, and it just says three what are what three things are you thankful for today and literally i just say it out loud and and that's the challenge to me is i don't i try i don't just think it i have to look at myself in the mirror kind of like the empowerment exercise we talked about and i say yeah, yeah, yeah. i am grateful for this this and this and it, uh, i challenge myself too it can't be the same three things every day so i can't make it just a part of my routine it has to be three different things yeah. every morning uh but i'd say yeah, yeah it I like forces the way you, you to feel you it. it too i think no matter how you do it but finding ways to be grateful whether it's writing it down in a journal which i also think is very important even if you have uh, negative thoughts writing those down in a journal can still be empowering because it allows you to have a physical place where you can visit those lingering negative thoughts if you want to but at the same time you can say okay i have all my negative thoughts here i'm going to put put them aside for now and i'm going to move on with my day with better things that's just it's just different strategies that might work for different people but I, I like what you're saying though i like the gratitude piece of that especially yeah, I mean, gratitude, however you want to feel like, I, you know, it's like when you feel it, how many times have you been around a group of people and you felt so like, man, I'm really loving this. But yeah. imagine if you were with those group of people and you added the extra layer of, hey, guys, I don't mean to fucking stop the thing, but I just want you to know I really appreciate you guys. I'm just going to say it like, you know, what that can do to others and how that that type of vulnerability can change a lot of people would probably say or at least i know i i don't know what people would say but i know what i've done and when i was in those situations i would always be like ah maybe i shouldn't say anything it's mm -hmm. corny but then i you know at one point in my life i started doing it as i got older and more confident in myself and you see how people respond to this and, and and it's like gosh it really does create just a good a better vibe you know it create a, it creates better energy like it feels good everyone's even i don't know i just think these are ways to sustain um, good energies, good levels of it. And you're not always going to have them. Yeah. You're not always going to have it. So just enjoy it while you have it. And then the days you don't enjoy that too. I, I do do this. Um, going back to writing your negative things. I don't write my negative things down, but like if, um, I like to pray every night. Mm -hmm. Um, and my prayers are probably not traditional, but I just like, Hey man, thanks. Th thanks God or the universe, whatever's there. Just thanks for being here. Thanks to my angels. And, but I always say, Hey, you know, I didn't have a good day today, but like, I just really appreciate being alive. Like, just thanks for putting me here. Thanks for helping me feel this pain. Like, I don't know. I think when you can accept both sides of the coin, uh, I'm not saying it gets easier. See, I think that's the tricky thing too. I think sometimes we do things because we think like being positive is going to make it easier. No, no, no. Like uh, uh, wisdom, enlightenment, whatever you want to call it, I think is 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 just as hard as a road as being the ignorant one. You know, we're all blind to it. You know, so uh, just to appreciate both sides of the coin, though, uh, gratitude. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I like that you put it as, uh, you know, things doesn't mean just things are going to get better. Um, and I wasn't going to get too personal with things now either. But, you know, as, as you know, a few years ago, I lost my mom. And I, I dare say that, as a matter of fact, uh, things not only did not get easier, in some ways, uh, you know, they, they got harder. But at the end of the day, though, I would say that I, as much as I would give anything to have my mom back right now i feel i am still uh, a much more grown and enriched and better person now because of the unfortunate and difficult lessons that i learned at that time and uh you learn how to cope and you learn uh you know uh mechanisms and uh, systems in your life that help make things easier and so in a sense I, I feel like i am a much better person now because of that tragic thing that i went through with losing my mom and, and just like how many people may be going through their own tragedies, whether it's the COVID-19 or any other crap they might be going through in the life right now, or maybe a combination of things plus the COVID-19 that ultimately, uh, you know, there's nothing that I can say that, you know, is going to say, Hey, your pain is going to eventually be gone. No, you, but you will come up with better ways to cope with the pain and you will come up with better ways to learn and grow and become a better person. Or you may, it may also, you may also uh, allow it to, in, envelop you and, and allow it to control your life. But really, at the end of the day, it's it's your 
decision on how you want to cope with that. And I'm not judging anyone that chooses to cope with it uh, by empowering themselves or choosing to cope with it by allowing it to defeat themselves. But I think it's important to realize that at the end of the day, you do have the option. And just because you made a choice one way or the other doesn't mean you can't make the choice to go the other way with it. Yeah, man, it's um, it's up to you. That's why life's beautiful. You know, that's that's why I always like I just I always go back down to this for me. It's like this is a jungle, dude. You always knew this was a jungle. When I was a kid, I always used knew this was in a jungle. I said, here we go. I remember having thoughts, dude, when I was in like first grade, like, oh, here we go. This is life. I'm about to start the journey. Like, I remember I had these fucking thoughts, bro. Like, I, I wasn't good at learning. So I, I spent a lot of time, like, thinking about what I'm looking at. And and uh, unfortunately for me, during those times, they developed into more fears. But but I, I could sit here now as an adult and just smile at it all because I'm just, I dude, I don't know. I look at all life and it's like, nothing's like you haven't changed. You change as a person, you, you, you get lessons, you learn, but there's this core aspect of you that was always there. And um, I like that I can see that. And, and, and I like that this time has allowed me more uh, opportunity to get in touch with those sides of me through painting, uh, just through listening to music too, dude. Like, I mean, when I listen to music, it's usually like at the gym or in the car, but to really like, just sit down, take a canvas, dude, and just create whatever you want and listen to music. And like, it's so simple. And, uh, it brings me back to a lot of old aspects of myself that I'm uncovering again and, and finding such deep appreciation for. And it, and in overall given me a greater sense of being happy still through this time. Yeah. Uh, although I do think about those who are suffering and I, every day, man, I, I do pray for people who cannot see their own blind spots or don't have the resources or the right friends that are helping them see their blind spots. I pray that the right person comes in their life or the right circumstance comes in their life and, and helps them see through those, uh, that possible lens because, I know a lot of me is who I am because of the people around me too, not yeah. just because of my perspective. You know, it's all about the, that's why I think life's a dream, man. Like people, all the best people in my life, all my friends, they're, I think they're all the angels. That's the, that's the fun part. Like, yeah. you know, they don't have to do the right thing to be an angel. It's like literally like people who give me things that I need to see aspects of myself to grow from, to be better. And in, let me be vulnerable right now, dude, I really appreciate our, this conversation. And I, I thank you for like giving both of us the space yeah. to oh, openly absolutely. discuss it. And you know, uh, it's cool. It's, it's part of life. Like we're, we're writing the story right now. We're painting Absolutely. on a canvas right now. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong or this or that or, oh, they're so limited or they're not so limited or it doesn't matter. It's right. art. Like, like literally, Everything's dream. Like literally we got on the phone an hour before this and you were, you were asking us, like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? And I said, literally, let's just, let's just go with it. Because I feel like anytime we have a conversation yeah. just as people, I feel it's always mutually beneficial. I feel feel both of us are, are better because of it. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to, to do the same, but also be able to present it out there because I think there are a lot of people out there that that need to hear some of this right now yeah it's it's a weird um you know the whole like what do you want to talk about thing you know like it's always like well whatever comes out in the most organic way yeah. just comes out and i guess that's what needed to be said right and for whoever it's for it's there and for whoever it's not it's not and that's the beauty of it like you know it's so um it's dreamy dude yeah dude wait dude and from the time you and i started this how long we've we been going now uh, it looks like almost an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So and remember I was, I, was, against... I said, I, and also I told Jamie, I was like, yeah. and I, I don't want to go too long. I don't, I don't want it to, you know, do this. So let's, let's try to keep it under 30 minutes. And but then, and of course you were like, well, but we don't want to, you know, just cut shorter from the middle of something. And of course, sure enough, you know, we get going on a deep subject and, and just how it goes when we have these conversations in general anyway. But, uh, because you know. yeah, good conversation. I mean, anything what I've learned through even doing sessions with people, dude, is you don't really get to the meat of something until like 45 minutes in. Yeah. I used to do these, uh, I used to do this thing where like, yeah, I just, I, I, let me just go back to the point. You yeah. can like, there's so much context and information. And a lot of, we talked about is a lot of generality still. We even even broke it down. And so like, there's so many um, nuances to life that 
I th- I knew that going over or under or 30 minutes might be limiting or, you know, but it, right. I appreciate like the time, you know, I, I don't want to hold up too much more time. Oh, no, that's uh, all right. no, I, I think we touched on a lot of good. good we're going things. around in circles probably at this point. <laughs> no, I, I, I think there's a lot of good pearls out there and pieces of wisdom that people can get from this, regardless of what their situation is right now. But I, I definitely would love to get back with it at some point and do a little more deep diving into these subjects. And I'd say certainly if anyone's watching or listening right now, uh, please, you know, comment, uh, let us know if there's anything, you know, maybe that's more specific or, or, or general to the things that you're dealing with that, maybe we can dive in more about but uh, i'd say from my end at least from from my standpoint i've really enjoyed this and, and i personally feel very uh much um enriched i guess because of of just this conversation that we've had me too man i i appreciate it i appreciate you holding the space for me just to be me like that's all i care about like the, pe- dude all of us are so different yeah we're, we're all so fucking different it it's like you just appreciate it all. It's, 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 uh, so I just appreciate you wanting to have the conversation, man. And just like talk about it. It's like one of my favorite, I love talking about life. It's all I ever used to do. As a Absolutely. Kid too. Well, I'd love <laughs> to do it again life. sometime. And then speaking of sometime, <laughs> yeah. um, when, once all this COVID thing's over, you know, you and I, we, we, uh, we've been talking about it, but we're way overdue to, uh, have, have a couple bourbons, man. Dude, I know, man. It's, um, well, yeah, I guess we got to wait now longer. I mean, well, I guess, you know, well, well, you I guess always, what I could do. You I, can I, always I, stop by and sit six feet away from me. We'll be fine. That's true. Well, you know, I, 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 some people may not know. I, I am a bourbon collector, so you know, I have these little two ounce uh, Boston round bottles. I could always just send you some, and then we'll, we'll zoom and, and we'll enjoy over. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll yeah, dude, it out. it's so good. But uh, before before we go, I do want to uh, give you a plug if you don't care. I know uh, it you, you, it's interesting. I know you don't call it life coaching. Maybe uh, we'll have to come up with a different word. But I know that you do a lot of that on the side. And uh, it's kind of unique for you because you, a lot of life coaches are out there marketing and trying to get clients to come to them. But you're kind of in a unique situation where a lot of the clients just kind of organically have kind of sought you out. But I did want to take an opportunity because I think, uh, you know, for some, you know, they may want to seek out help right now or just you know, some guidance, and I think uh, you might be really be able to help them. So if someone did want to reach out to you for uh, possibly life coaching or, or just wants to follow some of your social media and seeing some of the empowering stuff, because you are putting out a lot of really cool stuff, uh, even stuff that's, you know, been out for a while. Some of those, uh, you know, produced videos that you've done, I thought were really, really good. But where can someone uh, find Jamin if they either want to seek you out for coaching or just to get some of your insights on social media? Thanks, man. Um yeah, let me let me let me start saying this. Just thank you for that. And uh, I'm not a yeah, I'm not a life coach. Let me let me make it. My sessions are designed to hold a conversation and use the conversation as a focusing tool for you to understand yourself. So th- you know the uh, yeah, I've been doing this for four years now, and I've people have found me. I didn't. I made a decision when I got out of wrestling. Who am I when I'm not a wrestler? I really like helping people. I liked it when I was a wrestler. I, I, I enjoy this type of work. I enjoy these type of conversations. So conversations are not just designed if you're stressed, but if you want to fucking just stay on your game too. If right. you want to, if you want to stay up, if you're, I mean, there's a lot of people I work with from all different ranges. Um, some of them are already very successful people. They just like, they really enjoy the conversation. They It lights them up. Um, diving into the stuff we talked about, it lights them up. And then I have people that are struggling. So it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm right. not a, a, a fix. Right. All I am is an instrument for you to see yourself. I'm a mirror. And uh, you can find me at jaminolivencia.com. And uh, you can find me on social media under the 11th Warrior. Uh, that's one one T H warrior, the eleventh warrior, and um, find me on Facebook. Fucking friend me, I don't care. <laughs> like I like new friends either way. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm, and I'm glad you touched on that. I, I guess I was more expressing that because I know a lot of people are hurting right now. But yeah, certainly I've met a few of your clients, and a lot of some of them, yeah, they don't need you know the 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 personal you know. Uh, you know, pick me up, uh, so to speak, but they're, they're already successful and, and it's just stimulating conversation and, and ideas. I, I really like yeah. the, the creative side of, uh, of some of your things. And I'm, I'll just, you know, uh, call you up and we'll just, you know, shoot the shit about, you know, doing something with wrestling or whatever. But yeah, certainly I think anyone could, could benefit just from having, you know, you know, a conversation with someone that maybe sees things from a different angle. So either way, it's definitely appreciated. 
once again, your experiences are giving you the answers. So if it resonates with you, cool. If it doesn't, cool. Like, that's what it's about. Like, everyone holds another person's key. You know, I, even the people that are my clients, they're giving me keys to my castle, too. How much I'm learning about people, the patterns, the myself, when they, you know, you're like, wow. So the education is is absolutely uh, grand. And I'm just grateful that, shit, man, I'm grateful that I was put on this earth to like do work like this. I don't know. I didn't, ex- <laughs> I never, dude, I never expected to do, do work like this when I was a kid. I just, I was like, I'm a wrestler. I'm a wrestler. Even my twin brother told me when I was 19 years old, I just got in the OVW. My, my twin brother's like, he's like, dude, you should, uh, you should get into motivational speaking someday. I'm like, ugh, ugh, I'll never be a motivational speaker. Get out of here. Uh, not that I even do motivation, but the, 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 the just the, well, it's have, funny though. when you, people, you have, I, I, well, you, I have, but yeah. you know, it's like, it's conversation. It's public. You know, I guess you could call it public speaking, motivational, whatever. I don't know. I, even that's tacky to me though. Like really? I, I, at first, yeah, at first I'm like, well, I gotta say I'm a motivational speaker. I mean, I, you know, but like, it didn't feel like I didn't even like saying it. It felt ugly when I would say shit like that. Um, but yeah, I do public speaking, but it's like, you know, I like the whole conversations. I like the whole discussions like that are, that are uh, deeper and, and let the people talk, you know, uh, couldn't tell you how many schools I went to and I would, uh, quick story. Sorry, Nick. I know we're no, probably no, please. It's good, but I've been to, I've been to schools where I, we would do like, I, I would do like assembly experiences because I thought that's what you had to do to motivate some kids. And mm. I don't know. I, I, I remember being like backstage with this other speaker guy. We just met, um, he was doing a, a little thing and then I did a little thing and it just didn't feel like the kids really grasped anything. And I remember it bugged me for the longest time and I'm thinking, no, oh, maybe my presentation was just terrible. Maybe that's what it was. And, and, you know, I look back at it and I'm like, no, 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 the kids enjoyed me. I remember specifically the feeling I got, what was, it was lacking in is they weren't getting their opportunity to really speak. All they're doing is listening to someone that is telling them something and showing them something. It gives them a reason to fuck off in class. And like, you know what I mean? It's so, so then I developed this idea of like, well, why don't I, you know, go to schools and talk to a class per like, so wait for a class to come in per class. So I would do that for like the whole day where it'd be like 20 kids at a time. And what I found in that is a lot of these kids are opening up about things that they're really going through. And, you know, the schools would write me these letters and send me these gift cards saying, wow, you really helped our students with these conversations. Can you come back and do it again next year? And I'd be like, yeah. And, and, I, that was the moment where I realized, man, you can't, it's not about me motivating you. Like that's such a fucking, to me, that's so weird, but it's only weird to me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just, I don't think that is my, my makeup. My makeup is holding deep discussions where others, for some reason, get this inspiration from it that helps them see themselves more clearly and to do that for um to the schools and anyway like all that stuff that you know to me that's what real motivation is where we're using ourselves as a community um and 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 a weapon to help ourselves see ourselves i don't know it's as simple as that i i learned from those kids just as much as they learned from me from their perspectives from their struggles um even them opening up when they're in a situation where they're in other, other class, like when you get other kids to talk, man, you see them open up literally in the moment. That's a beautiful thing. When their teacher would tell me these kids don't open up like that. That's, you know, so what that tells me is people need to have more of these conversations because they're yearning for it. Clearly they're just afraid to show that because they've been taught that it's maybe not okay to show that. I'm not saying they have, but it's, that's it, all I'm gonna say. It's, that's what I've learned. It's, it's kind of a, and and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, but it almost sounds like it, it's almost like a beautiful irony in that you've learned that focusing on helping others and empowering others in turn actually empowered and bettered yourself. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, man. It's it's. I, I would say it's accurate that. Um, Yes. What's accurate is for me, what it is, is I'm just following my heart constantly. 
tomorrow I may wake up and say, I don't want to do this stuff, you know, and, and <laughs> that could change, you know, even like, I remember, uh, I don't know. There's so many like emotions I went through even in the self help field or doing the work I do, because at first, when I first started doing my services, this was four years ago, I, I was still in this wrestler mode where I'm like, Hmm, I got to make sure they get their money worth it. I to make sure it was like this, like, it was still like, I don't know. It was like, it wasn't me. And, and over the years, my own clients and the people who've stuck with me all to this time, who still like love to do it. Um, they're teaching me so many nuanced aspects about life. And, and I don't know. I just think there's a lot of benefit in people talking and that's all we got to do more of. And it's, it, it has to be reasonable talking. It can't be me versus you or you, your ideas versus my ideas. I think that's where uh, just people struggle. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of all over the board right now, but, but that's how I've always been. And I just think when you're being yourself, it works out. So like, but that's a big thing, man. People just, you just got to communicate. Communication is yeah. probably the biggest fucking problem with everybody. Yeah. The lack thereof. Right. And I think it's a lot easier to find differences than to find uh, 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 commonalities or similarities. So I think that that in of itself is a great challenge is, you know, anytime maybe you're scrolling through Facebook and someone is posting something that maybe you, you very viscerally disagree with is, is first taking a step back and thinking of how you can connect and and find similarities and commonalities instead of thinking about, oh, well, that person's different than I am. So, you know, I'm going to have this negative assumption about them because they don't agree with, you know, my particular beliefs. Yeah. My mom used to do that. My mom used to tell me, Hey, when you are getting mad, it's because you really just don't understand something and, and, and you're fighting against it. And that's as simple as that. And, you know, I saw that when I would judge people or anything. Like, I was like, I always knew in the back of my head when I went home that night, ah, oh, fuck, I'm, it's because I'm really being insecure or because I'm not, you know, I don't really understand something. And, I, you know, that's a, for me, that just, once again, respect to my mom for, like, just always fucking drilling it in my head. Um, because now as an adult, I... I feel like it, it sets in more, but yeah, man, it's a, uh, that's life, dude. That's why it's fun though. Here we are live. We're alive, dude. It's fucking awesome. I, I think yeah. it's so cool to be alive. I really do. I, I've always found that fascinating. And if you're at home and you're even listening to it at this point, like I really, really fucking hope and wish you well that your life is just full of more beautiful surprises. You could see them. They're there you just got to train your mind to look for it. You know, if go out to a tree and literally put your hand on it, go put your hand on it, feel the aliveness of it. It will talk to you. It will give you a sensation. It doesn't have to be literal all the time. Just it will give it to you through your feelings. It's only authentic to you, you know, um, maybe not touching a tree for everyone in the work, but for me, like nature Nature's where it's at, man. Touching the grass even and just being like, thanks for being here. Or go to a tree, put your hand on it. Thanks for, for being here. You know, like I look at a tree as an antenna to the universe. You know, it's like, I, I, so when I see trees, I see very much the aliveness of them. And I just think they're powerful. So if you're fucking listening, if, go touch a tree, go put your hand on a tree and wish it well. It will give you that same power back if you use your imagination. Maybe that'll help empower you. Just there's beauty everywhere, man. You just gotta, you gotta choose it. You gotta choose it. And, um, it takes time. It takes like time. That. We're all learning. There's, there's beauty everywhere, but you gotta choose it and it takes time. I like that. Some great, great parting words. Well, Jamin, I just want to express that again, it's been absolutely my pleasure sitting down with you. It's a privilege, my friend. And, uh, you know, I'm, I feel very honored and privileged just to be able to call you a friend. And I hope, hope that we can uh, not only oh, have some man, time to sit down and have some, have a couple bourbons soon, but hopefully we can have a chance to have some more dialogues like this soon. Cause I, I, I personally find it really helpful. And, uh, well, you and I always find ourselves in these situations, don't we? Where we're just talking yeah. about the stuff and it's fun. Yeah, man. Right. So thank you, dude. Thanks for, thanks for your time, Nick. I really appreciate it. And thanks to whoever is watching, uh, and listening, just like, thanks for your space and, Really, I wish you all well. Like, keep going and keep supporting Nick because he's a really good dude, and uh, I've known him for a long time. And he he really cares about just becoming a better person. That's what I've known from him. So, uh, 
thanks Nick and thanks to anybody who's watching this and supporting Nick he he's the fucking man absolutely I appreciate that Jay and just as much I, I'm gonna uh put up the information one more time if people want to reach out to you but just want to say once again uh you know express my thankfulness uh I love you man and uh, hopefully get a chance to talk to you and see you soon love you too brother be safe man take care awesome